Hi everyone, welcome to Joe Joe Fitness with me, Joe, and to today's Pilates with weights workout. So all the exercises can be done without weights, but if you do have them, I do suggest you go grab them. If you don't have weights and you have something like a water bottle, if you have a couple of water bottles or a couple of tins, something like that, then please go and grab them. They will help to augment your workout. If you do enjoy, please like, share, subscribe, hit that bell, let me know you've been watching. And when you're ready, we're going to come up to our standing starting position. And we just take a bit of a shoulder roll. I'm just gonna go here. Oh. oh dear. And then back the other way. Just something quite small. So I have planned Pilates for this morning so that we can get a bit of a stretch out. So lift up, reach away. And release. And lift up and stretch up and again three's a charm lift up stretch up and release and then we're just going to roll down and roll back up again so nice and simple shoulder roll at the top lift the chin and rolling down and rolling up and rolling down Rolling up. Good. Two more like this, please. And again, so just kind of getting a nice lengthening down the back of the leg. So we're going to take a walk away. So we're going to roll down and we're going to walk out to plank. So remember, you can do plank on feet and hands, or you can bring those knees to the floor. Okay. And I have positioned my mats so that I can just kind of change the position so you can get a look at it from both orientations. So walk out to plank and then walk back and come all the way up. Here comes the sun. And roll down. Oh, we made it to another day. That's beautiful, isn't it? We survived. Never guaranteed. So it's always good. All right, two more. And back in. And let's just take this last one. And then we're gonna come down onto the ground. And that's where we're kinda gonna stay. So lower yourself down. I'm just gonna shuffle myself back. We're gonna take a dorsal raise to begin with. So glue the legs to the floor lifting the upper body so you can do it with the hands lifting or you can do it with the hands on the floor so at the minute i've got my hands down you can do alternate hands lifting just try not to push off the floor we're not looking for stretch here we're looking for back strength so it's a contraction through the lower back again i'll turn side on so you get a look at a view at the different orientations and you can do both hands together. Just notice my chin stays tucked into my chest. Easy for me to say, tucked into my chest. And I'm not sticking my chin out and I'm not pulling my elbows back. So I'm not looking for that kind of line. Nice, long, straight line. Pilates ABCs. Alignment, breathing, centering, and dynamics. So alignment is skeletal alignment, breathing, pretty self-explanatory, breathe, don't hold breath, centering, drawing that core in, drawing navel to spine, and dynamics nice and slow. So just keep that going. So I'm going to ask you to just do that nice and slowly for a little while longer. And I'm just going to make sure got the best view. Right. So just two more please. And then just take it back into that swan stretch. So just coming back, if your knees allow it, coming back into swan stretch just because it's good to reset. Give that back a little stretch. 
and then we're going to come around and we're going to come to sitting and we're going to come to weights if you've got weights grab them now excuse me if you don't have weights it doesn't matter you can do this so sitting all good sitting up nice and tall legs out again i'll go a little side on arms are out and we're going to open the arms side to side okay now if you drop back into c curve a little bit so pilates c curve is where we roll the spine back you're going to put a little bit of tension through the abdominal area and opening the arms side to side from here now just holding these weights up in front can be quite tricky so if you need to hands rest on the thighs and you open to the side and you come back to a resting position so closed chain or you've got this open chain continual movement so it just depends how you're feeling chest shoulders back neck abs okay And I want you to really remember this exercise because there is a progression of this that we will bring in later on, if I remember. So there is the opportunity, if you don't like the progression, to do this one again. All right. So let's do one more each side. And then just let that go. Just release the weights and just give the arms a bit of a rest. We're going to come over, so we're going to be moving around the body. We're coming over onto all fours. Again, if your knees don't like this, there is the option to do it standing up. So on all fours, weight in one hand, you're going to work with the opposite leg, out and in. And again, there's options here. This is open chain, pushing away. If you want to do the closed chain, bring everything back to the floor take it out, bring everything back to the floor. So choosing your intensity. And you might find that because these durations are quite long, you might need to change throughout the time. So if you start off with the open chain and you're like, actually, that's getting a bit much, then you certainly can drop it down to closed chain. And equally, if you're doing the closed chain, you think, actually, this feels a bit easy. You can take it up and open it up. Just keep that navel drawn onto the spine. Keep breathing. Keep slow and steady. Four more, please. And last one. Okay, just get, um, pop that down, get yourself a little bit of a shake out and release. Just make sure everything feels okay because we're gonna set up and we're gonna do side two straight away. Okay, so put the weight in the other hand, set yourself up and again, in and out when you're ready. So if you are finding that the knees don't like this, you can come to standing, you bring it in and you balance and take it out, in and balance and take it out, in and balance and take it out. So it's a similar exercise. Um,
All right, last eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And you can pop that away. Just again, sit it back, just make sure the wrists, the joints, the knees, give them a bit of a rub, a bit of love, and just make sure everything feels good and okay. We're gonna turn over to supine. So I'm just gonna take a bit of a diagonal view so I can see you and see me. And we're gonna take those weights up, bend the knees, feet flat, so semi-supine and just take the weights up and just push them towards the sky and pull them back, but don't bend the arms, keep the arms straight. Track the weights over the chest. This is a scapular contraction only, so just those shoulder blades, wing-like bones at the back of the body. They are protracting and retracting, okay? So pull them back together and then push them apart. Pull them back together and push them apart. And really feel the difference between the two so when we do pilates what we actually want is this upper back contraction so pull the shoulder blades down really squeeze them together and hold the arms here and we're going to take the arms out to the side like a fly and bring them back in just like a fly whilst maintaining that scapular contraction we've got the abdominal integrity from just holding the tummy here so the option now is to do a little bit of a curl up as you come up okay to take the arms out wide, keep the scapular contraction, and then curl up the body. Hopefully you can see that. So you've got this little bit of extra abdominal work. If you don't like the curl up, then just stay with the arms. And if you don't like the arms, just stay with the curl up. If you don't like it all, you cannot do it. Have a little stretch and a rest. Go and make a cup of tea. <laughs> Although you should always give it a try. Everything's impermanent, so it's not going to last forever. So even the ones we don't like, we know they're going to end. They just seem to take longer than the other ones. The ones we like always seem to go quicker. Okay. Four more like this, please. And we're going to layer this up. So we're going to change it in two more. Last one. All right. So just take a moment, just relax off the neck, let everything go. And then Pilates tabletop. So think about your legs, Pilates tabletop, ankles in line with knees, knees in line with hips, even though the leg is bent. You don't have to point your toes, that's just something that I do naturally. Um, just have the feet nice and relaxed. And we're going to take those arms back to the side, we're going to rest the body on the ground. We're going to hold the legs nice and still. And we're going to just do a few more with the legs held in tabletop. Now what we want to make sure is that the legs aren't moving. So we're not pulling the knees in over the belly and we're not pushing them out straight and we're not dropping the feet down, we're not holding the feet up. There's all kinds of things that go on in this position that shouldn't. What I will say is if you find it really difficult to do and you pull the knees in, that is going to make it a little bit easier for you. So maybe that is a cheat you can use until you can hold them at proper position or one foot on the ground, do one leg at a time and do a few reps and then maybe swap over to balance the sides. So there are ways and means of making it to the more extended level. Of course, dropping the weights out of your hands is an option as well. So just doing the movement body weight. All right, four more like this, please. Keep pressing that back into the ground. Make sure you've got good control and hold on the abs. Two to go. And one, lovely. Pop the weights down to one side. Give those knees a hug. Just rock across the back. Make sure everything feels good. Maybe rock the neck as well. Just wanna make sure everything's doing okay. Pop the feet on the floor. Quick costume check. There we go, nothing's popping out. And then we're going to take the weights again. So option with these weights is always yes or no. 
Take the arms up overhead. Again, try and draw the scapula down. We don't want the shoulders up to the ears. If you just see it when I'm sitting up, when you have the arms up and you have the shoulders to the ears, you're cutting off breath. You're impeding the throat. So we want to make sure that's not happening even when we're supine. So just pulling the shoulder blades down, keep the thorax down. And then we're going to curl up and touch the knees. And we're going to curl all the way down and relax. Curl up and touch the knees. Look between the knees, gap between the legs. I don't have the legs pressing together. There's a gap between the legs. Remember, it's a anatomical neutral. So if you were in anatomical neutral, the legs wouldn't be touching. So they're not touching now. And just a nice, slow and steady roll up and roll down. Keep drawing navel to spine. That's your centering. And keep nice and steady. If you work with your breath, your A, B, C, Ds, A and D, alignment and dyna, um, sorry, A and C, my goodness, alignment and centering, kind of linked together, and B and D, breathing and dynamics. If you move to the speed of your breath, you're just about at the right speed, okay? So it all links up and intertwines very nicely. Especially if I get it wrong. <laughs> Four more, please. So I bet you can guess where this is going. Same as last time, you have the option to leave the feet where they are. You can bring one foot up and put it into tabletop and continue, or you can bring both feet up and continue and bring it into tabletop. The hands could now pass the knees and come down to the side. This is gonna release the thorax, release the shoulders. So they're making a bigger arc because the knees have come in a bit closer to us now. When they're down here, they're further away. So take them to the hip, but don't put them on the ground unless you are really struggling with the weights. You can again, rest them down, take a break, and then breathe in, breathe out, curl up. So lots of options, always lots of options. Breath in, breath out, curl down, breath in, breathe out, curl up. All right, let's see if we can do 10 more. Remember, put those feet down if you need to. Keep the legs apart, don't squeeze them together. Keep the knees over the hips rather than the belly, although that is permissible if you are struggling. Feet down, feet up. Now, when you say 10 more, it's a good idea to count. I think we've done about four. We'll keep going for another three. I don't know. Two. We'll take this as the last one. And put the feet down. Rock them side to side. Just release off the back. So we've done quite a few exercises working on contraction through the abdominals and lengthening through the back. So we're going to just flip that narrative. So we're going to turn around because it's always good to work front back and sides, front back and sides, make sure everything stays in a nice balanced equilibrium. So we're gonna come down and this time we're gonna lift alternate legs behind us. Okay, so just put my feet on the mat, lift. So the upper body stays down. I'm just lifting my head to speak to you, but the upper body stays down and it just moves from the hip bones. And again, I will turn this way so you can get Another view, lift and lower. Squeeze the glutes and raise the leg into posterior plane. Upper body stays down and relaxed. Keep the navel drawn into the spine. Keep the breathing, keep the dynamics. Everything still, check, 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 check.
two more please and that's each side so left and right counts as one and then left and right all right and left count as two lovely bring it back into swan just stretch it out lovely and then if you can we're going to come back to kneeling so we're going to take opposite arm to leg again but this time what we're going to do is we're going to take the arm out to the side the leg still goes behind okay i'm just going to have to grab some glasses because the sun is well and truly up so leg goes back arm goes to the side and again just showing you from every angle all right, it just because we're so used to taking them in opposite directions, this can take a little bit of a, a mental challenge to kind of think, ah, one's going different. So give that a go, excuse me. Always important to stay hydrated. So, and again, you can close it by bringing it to the ground and taking a rest in between each rep, or you can keep them off. And just as before, oops, falling over. You can take it so that you have got it if you can't kneel. So you can take it standing up. So there's options galore again. I am coming undone at the seams. Everything's sliding away. Now I'm going to hit that. Oh dear. Faffed about a bit. Hopefully you've kept going with your chosen one. Of course there is the option as well to drop down onto the elbow i forgot that one that's always an option it does make your bum a bit prominent but it takes the pressure out of the wrist so again options 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 you should know how your body feels and you can usually make adjustments without me having to say four three two and one Okay, and then just take a little bit of a rest. Just make sure those wrists feel okay. A lot of weight pressure on those wrists. What we tend to do as well, which we need to try and combat, is we tend to dump over into the, le the supporting wrists and the ones that are moving, give them a bit of extra space. What we want to do is um, just keep that weight centralised and between the wrist and the knee so we're not actually throwing it into one or the other we're trying to keep it very centralized and that keeps it really activating the core and that's where we're trying to target so Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. Let that go. All right, so again, just make sure, yeah, it can be quite tough and through the knees. So just, you know, really pad them out if you, um, if you do struggle with knees, wrists. Um, so we're going to come back to sitting. We'll come back to that exercise that I said we'd be coming back to just because I will forget about it otherwise and then you'll be forever thinking what was that it's not that exciting <laughs> so um, it's just going to be a case of doubling up so you sit back into your C curve bring the arms and you're just gonna bring them out to the side so very much like we did prone sorry not prone we did them supine didn't we um, so yeah you can do them prone as well but this time we're doing them seated so it's just working across gravity in a different way so when we did them supine, you know, we had gravity working upon us and then off 
because we rested the arms away from it. Here, you've got gravity working the whole length of the arm, pressing down, and you're working across it. So it makes it a little bit more tricky. If you need to come up in between, just take a rest. If you need to rest the hands down, drop into C curve, work from that rest position. They all still apply, okay? So, doing what needs to be done. And of course, the alternating is an option as well. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and last one. Good work, come on up. Just release that off, just make sure everything feels good. So we're gonna do one of my favorite exercises now. It's a side-lying exercise. So you're gonna to come to side-lying. I have rather stupidly forgotten my blue block. So I'm just gonna roll up some mat. Probably a bit too much. And I'm gonna just give myself something to put my head on, okay? So I only need one weight. So I'm gonna just make a little bit of a pillow there. So your head comes down. It shouldn't really be dangling underneath you. It should be up here, but I've forgotten my blue block. Your knees are bent, they're stacked. One arm is out in front, not overhead, but in front of you, in front of the chest. And the weight, I'm just thinking, is that in the way? I'm sorry. So the weight stacks onto the palm that's down, okay? And you're gonna lift up to 90 degrees and then you're going to take it over the back twisting across the obliques rotating the spine until the arm opens behind you but don't put it on the ground just because we're doing with weights make sure you're watching turn the head watch where that hand is at all times if it goes out of your eye line you've gone too far okay so make sure you're working this the spine as well the neck as well so i'm just going to take it side on like this so you can see how it looks from here so up and then open, hover, 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 and up and back down. What I will say is when you open to the back, as the arm goes over, if you find your knees are starting to rise or one knee is starting to open, that's your limit, okay? So use that as a guide as well. So if you find, let me show you, if you're kind of doing this and the knees are rolling up, you're not getting the oblique twist, okay? So make sure that the knees stay down, you really feel that spinal twist, that oblique stretch, and then back in and down. We're gonna keep going. It's a bit of a funny one to set up this. Again, keep those weights, if you're using weights, of course, tracking away from the face. If you drop one, you don't wanna hit your face, you wanna hit a rib or a boob or something, or a chest. You don't wanna be hitting the face, knocking teeth out or breaking noses. So just make sure that you are keeping the weight in a safe place and then you can smooth it out so it doesn't have to go like staccato dump 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 you can smooth it out so it's just like a smooth swiss watch time you know seconds hand just keeps ticking over get that rotation and then back again beautiful four more it's such a nice one this it's great for lubricating the intervertebral discs in the spine obviously works in the shoulder the chest the obliques you can feel that good for the underlying you know pectorials underlying breast tissue for helping keep boobs where they're supposed to be there's so many benefits to this one and i think it has quite a um meditative methodical kind of feel to it as well so you can kind of just shut your eyes and just like flapping your wings isn't it in slow-mo it's beautiful so we'll do one more and then we will just straight away turn over to the other side so we're just going to turn over i'm just going to turn my back on you forgive me but it will give you the other view And just make sure those knees are stacked, make sure everything's down, palm to palm, and then up and over, twist it, open it, and then bring it back. When you get to the starting position, 
one of the things I should have mentioned is sometimes when we do this, when we twist and we come back, we come back and it comes up short. So what you have to do is you have to kind of bring it there and then you do that little extra oblique twist to bring it so it is palm to palm. So just make sure you finish where you started, okay? So you just need to bring it up, make sure that hand comes definitely onto the palm, okay? And up and over, palm to palm. If you were coming up a bit short on the other side, don't worry. This is a lot to think about with this exercise. Before, so I could do these all day, but yeah, there's a really nice one. This it's, it's one you can do in bed, you know, if you do have sore lower back when you first wake up. I think we've got one more, that might have been it, but we'll just do this bonus one more. Um, yeah, if you do wake up and you know your back's a bit sore, it's a great one to do before you even get out of bed because you can get that rotation. That movement will stimulate the synovial fluid between the vertebrae and that will sort of loosen up the lower back. It also movement, as we know, it warms up the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles and when they're warm they, they obviously move a lot easier than when they're cold. So um, always a good idea to you know, do a few morning stretches morning movements help us so we're going to come back to sitting and we're going to sit in this position here and <clears throat> excuse me you can use the weight so you cannot use the weight so this one is a little bit like a swimming stroke but we're going to take it opposite arm to leg arm goes out the back so as one arm comes over we twist the body we twist opposite hand to foot and the other arm goes over so it's bit like front crawl. I don't do a lot of swimming but I think that's one. I prefer to paddle board and ride the top of the water. I don't like being in it particularly. <clears throat> I get very envious. You see all these people doing all this open water swimming and I think that's something I think I'd really love to do but I just hate swimming. So, <laughs> no, it's like, you know, being out in the fresh air, being out in nature, all of that, you know, <clears throat> a lot of it, if you're doing open water swimming, it's free because you just go into a body of water that's just there. I love free. Free is one of my favourites. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I just don't like the swimming part of it. And the whole faff of being wet and then trying to get dressed. And get dry and get warm yeah so not very dedicated to that kind of effort oh. having said that I might go and sit in the bath after this <laughs> and pretend oh good work couple more big circumduction at the shoulder here bringing it all the way over and again, one more each side, lovely. And then just put those weights away and just loosen and lengthen it out. Okay, we're gonna come back down to our supine position. Um, we'll leave the weights for the time being. We'll concentrate on the legs. So leave the, the body down, legs up. I just want you to pop your hands on your thighs. Now you can do one leg at a time of this. Um, you don't have to do both legs. You're gonna create a circuit of pressure. So you're gonna pull your knee towards you, but you're gonna push it back with your hand and you're gonna try and create, you feel the pressure. You're pushing and you're pushing, you know, those equal and opposites. So you're pushing against it. And if you do it with both and hold it for about 10 and then kind of let it go, okay? And then push, 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 push. Really push your knees into your hands, your hands into your knees. Push, 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 push. And then release off, okay? 
take a breath and then again I'm lifting my head because I'm creating more pressure you don't have to lift your head if it doesn't feel good and then release off and equally if you're doing it one side you can use both hands and you can curl up and then swap sides so you're just creating this almighty resistance within the body so just make sure everything feels okay no tension and again Good, and again, and release, and again, two more if you will please, if you're doing the single leg, op leg option, finish the one you're on and do one more, uh, unless that makes you uneven then do two more, <laughs> alright last time. And again, just lay it down. Take a nice long stretch this time and just make sure everything feels okay. Lovely. And then we're going to come over onto all fours once more. This is our kind of finale. I'd like you to take plank position. So you can either take plank on your toes or you can take plank on the knees. So we're going to take a plank position and we're going to get a weight in our hand, okay, and you're going to row, alright, so I'll show you side on and I'll show you in full plank, row, 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 it is very tough, so what I suggest is you try for a couple of reps, maybe two, maybe four, maybe, you know, ten, if you're feeling really really like you can do it and then change sides okay and just keep it going like that so just do like two reps and then change sides two reps and change sides you know or four or whatever you can manage um and yet yeah, knees is fine as is toes but this is our last sort of hurrah so four change sides See how you go. So I can manage six when I'm down, four when I'm up. And if you know, if you're just struggling to pick the hand up and do that kind of unbalanced plank, just hold your plank and just take plank from the knees and just kind of roll it up and hold six or two or four or ten and then come down and then up and down so you don't have to some people find picking the hand up is really tricky and I totally get that when you're ready come back into swan stretch please Yeah, sometimes mind over matter helps as well. So you think, oh my gosh, that looks really, really tough. And then when you actually get your body doing it, you're like, actually, you know what? It's okay. Yeah. All right. Just come on up. We're just going to take a few stretches. So just start with the neck. One of the areas that people in Pilates quite often say, oh, you know, I can do the Pilates, but my neck really gives me grief. So just dropping the chin down. And lifting the chin up we're not bouncing we're not using speed or dynamics all right and then pause in the center and just looking over to your right and looking over to your left try and keep the chin parallel to the ground just rolling it round all right last time Come to centre, dropping the ear over now and lifting up and up. So ear to shoulder rather than shoulder to ear. We will do the shoulders in a minute, but just getting this lovely stretch. Just thinking about all the areas around the neck. Oh, that's good. One more each side, that feels nice. And over. Good. Let's just roll the shoulders. And back the other way. And then 
taking a breath up. And bringing the hands down and around behind. Just take a stretch through the chest. You know, we were using those weights. We were doing the chest quite a lot. Um, planks, those um, curl ups, those sit backs. So just, yeah, using them. And then just relaxing off. And equally, you know, the opposing muscle groups stretch out through the shoulder blades as well. We were trying to keep that scapular contraction. So this is now just going to release that off. And then you don't have to be kneeling as well if that doesn't suit you. I just love to kneel. Um, reaching over to the side, stretching out through the obliques. And over the other way. One thing that's really great about the sun coming up behind me here is that I get a big shadow so I can get a view of what my body line looks like so I don't need a mirror, which is lovely. And release, okay, breath in. Bring the hands down, take them out nice and wide and give yourself a round of applause. Well done.